Have you ever wondered how humans survive in space? What would happen if you were suddenly teleported there? In a vacuum, oxygen would expand and rush out from your body. Without it, you would pass out in about 15 seconds. And you wouldn't live for much more than a minute after that. But not only do we go to space, we live in it. Astronauts who work on the ISS occasionally have to leave the safety of the station, either to inspect, fix, or build something. That's when they go on spacewalks, known as EVAs. And that is when they put on the spacesuit, EMU, their own pressurized human-shaped spacecraft. But the process of putting on the spacesuit starts before you wear any of the cool stuff. Just like life, it all begins with a diaper, or as NASA likes to call it, the maximum absorbency garment. Spacewalks can last for more than six hours, so it's better to have it on you, just in case. Soft and breathable cotton clothing, not unlike what you might have at home, will help absorb the extra sweat and make wearing other parts of the suit more comfortable. And now onto the cool stuff. Quite literally, the next layer you put on is the liquid cooling and ventilation garment. Six hours is a long time, and while you are out there working and moving, it can get quite hot. That's why cool water runs through the thin tubes woven in the stretchy spandex, helping draw away generated body heat. Vents draw in the moist air and help with oxygen circulation inside. Now we'll start with the upper torso. At its core, there is a rigid fiberglass vest, known as the hard upper torso, that serves as a strong shell for other components to be mounted on. This backpack is the primary life support system. It is an independent unit that provides oxygen, power, caution, and warning system, radio equipment, water cooling, and carbon dioxide removal. Conveniently located in front and center is the displays and control module, with all needed switches, controls, and gauges at arm's reach to operate the suit and its various systems. Arms connect to the hard upper torso. They contain bearings to allow for a greater range of motion and are interchangeable, available in various sizes to fit different astronauts. Pressurized gloves tackle the challenge of reducing stiffness while ensuring finger mobility, protection, and integrated heaters for cold conditions. The lower torso assembly is made up of the lower waist closure, spacesuit pants, and boots. The waist bearing is there to allow greater mobility. The suit was designed for use in a zero-gravity environment, and on Earth, it would weigh about 120 kilograms. Slicing into it reveals why, exposing multiple layers, each serving an important purpose. An outer layer shielding from radiation and micrometeoroids, multiple thermal insulation layers, tear-resistant inner layers, and layers ensuring pressure and structural integrity. Before we continue, we better fix that. This is the communications carrier assembly, also known as the Snoopy Cap, an audio headset used for communication with the crew. Now is a good time to pack the water-filled in-suit drink bag for a little refreshment during the spacewalk. Let's talk about the helmet. The helmet is a transparent bubble made of polycarbonate plastic that securely connects with the suit, and it remains fixed, not following the movement of the head. Inside, there's a vent pad providing proper oxygen flow. Positioned on top is the extravehicular visor assembly. When exposed to direct sunlight, you can easily pull down the visor, which has a thin layer of gold coating to filter out harmful rays. If you still need a bit more shade, there are adjustable blinders that you can use. On the other hand, if it gets too dark, the visor assembly is equipped with built-in lights. We can even attach a camera to record the wearer's point of view. How does everything look? Great! You might have noticed that from this perspective, you can barely see anything on the chest. That's why the words on the control module are printed backwards intended to be legible with the help of the wrist mirror. On the other wrist, you will put your cuff checklist, which is your to-do list, to ensure you don't forget any of the mission objectives. 
Now, before we send you back out there again, there are a few last things to add for your safety. You'll need tethers to keep you attached to a spacecraft at all times. The last thing you want is to float away into space. But if somehow that still happens, that's why you have simplified aid for EVA rescue, SAFER, which is attached to the bottom of the primary life support system. SAFER is equipped with nitrogen thrusters and a small joystick so you can guide yourself back to the spacecraft. Okay, are you ready? Controls are intuitive. Just gently push forward. I said gently. So, this is it. The spacewalk. Albeit a very unusual and risky one. But this is where the suit, with all its carefully engineered parts, proves its worth, letting astronauts go out and personally inspect places that would otherwise be inaccessible. More than 50 years ago, a different type of spacesuit granted humans the ability to walk on the moon. Maybe in the future, we'll see people jump and stumble their way across other planets. But until then, there will hardly be any view as good as this one.